But let me start out by saying this. Wow, I cannot uh, say how exciting, uh, how excited I am. And I've heard many of you say the same thing about how excited you are about what God's doing in the life of the church. Uh, you know, God, we got to get a different role, right? So, man, it's exciting. Um, and as we talk about the gospel, um, that's really uh, what we're talking about when, when God's doing things is, just say today, everybody that was baptized today was connected to a family member or a friend that got them here to the church the first time, and from that point on, they got connected, and the gospel works so that their lives are intertwined, and they become uh, a part of the body of Christ and the local body of Christ here, and we just want to give God the glory for that. So that's the exciting stuff right there. Um, and that's really what I'm, I'm preaching on today is that when we share the gospel, um, what's your plan? What's your plan? How would you share the gospel? I asked this this past Wednesday night. I just said, hey, let me throw this out there. Uh, if you were going to lead someone to the Lord, how would you go about doing it? You had a friend that you wanted to tell them about Jesus, and what would be your plan? What would be your plan? We heard a lot of things, and we shared some stuff right there, but uh, we need to have a plan. You will hear that all to, all, a lot today in the next 35, 45 minutes. So, what's your plan? What's your plan? Because honestly, not just me, but you have been given something that's called the Great Commission. The Great Commission. That's to everybody. To every Christian that uh, uh, wants the moment you trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, this is your commission. Jesus has commanded you, he commissioned you to do this. Turn to uh, Matthew uh, chapter 28. If you go to the very last pages of Matthew, right before Mark, and you will find the Great Commission. Okay? The Great Commission. And this is what it says. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20. 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus come up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. <coughs> and, <coughs> excuse me. and lo, I am with you always to the end of the age. In fact, whenever I baptize someone, somebody asks me, say, Pastor, you're baptized in the what name? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right there it is. Baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, and then it doesn't say, okay, you got them dumped, let them go. <laughs> What's it say? Teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and love I'm with you always. We need to continue to disciple those new individuals who have come to Christ and help them in their walk. Because the moment, I don't care if you've been saved for a day, I don't, I don't care if you've been saved for 50 years, the Great Commission has been given to you. Amen. Okay? It never stops. Go, therefore, it's always moving. So I want to open up in prayer. We'll jump right into this, okay? Let's pray. Father God, I come to you right now. Thank so much for the, the many baptisms that we've seen today. Father, I thank you for each one of those lives, how they're all represented here today. Father, how they're connected. Father, they're family with us. They're part of your family. And Jesus being the head of that family. So Father, today we just ask you to continue to move in this church and the lives of the individuals. That, that you will speak to our hearts today. It's not by accident that we are here. We have a divine appointment with you. And so right now we ask you to move in our lives. Speak to us. We love you and we thank you. We ask you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so the call to share the gospel has been given to everyone who has trusted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I, I, I don't care. I know my former pastor, John Burst, said he knew a guy down in Jacksonville, Florida. He was the biggest soul winner he knew. He could not read. Could not read. Uh, so what he would do, he'd say, well, he couldn't read. Well, how's he reading the Bible? This is what he'd do. He'd take a tract. This is a tract, T-R-A-C-T. -T. He'd walk up to someone in the grocery store and say, 
hey, excuse me. He said, but I can't read. Someone gave this to me. Would you actually read that for me? <laughs> yes, for Bob. They were reading it right to him. And so they start reading it for him. And then when it gets done, he says, okay, now you want me to tell you what all that means? Let me share with you. And so he would lead them to the Lord with a trap. And we'll talk about that here later on as well. So I don't care if you've if got a seventh grade education, you got a sixth grade. I don't care if you got, I don't care if you got a PhD. God has called you to share the gospel with people. Okay? He wants you to tell someone about what God's done in your life. He wants you to tell, more importantly, what Jesus did for them. Amen. Now, I, let's put the next slide up there, Tyler. The gospel, listen to me, the gospel is the most valuable message, gift, that anyone could ever share with someone. Amen? Amen. The most important, most valuable gift, message that you could ever give anyone, especially like we saw today, with your loved ones. With your loved ones. There should be nothing that keeps you from sharing the gospel with someone. Especially knowing that if they do not trust Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, that the day they breathe their last breath, they're going to spend eternity in hell. Amen. Now, shouldn't we want to tell someone about that and spare them from that? Hey, Jesus loves them. I don't care whether you love them or not. You should. However, Jesus loves each and every one of us and the, each individual who's ever lived on this planet, Jesus loves them and doesn't want them to spend eternity in hell. He wants them to spend eternity with him. Amen. Now, write this down. Okay? For some of you, this is a this is a tough thing right here. You ready? Next slide, Tyler. Sharing the gospel is not complicated. Did you hear me? Sharing the gospel is not complicated. We make it complicated. You know why? We get so uh, all, all round up and we go, oh, 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 I don't know what to say. Hey, it's not really that hard, and we put so much pressure on ourselves because you know why? No one likes to fail, and so we think, oh, well, I better not share the gospel because I don't know what I'm doing. So guess what? I'm going to share it with them, and then they're, they're not going to trust Jesus, and, and, and they'll probably spend a turn in hell. Well, guess what? That's a lie from Satan. Okay? He wants you to stop from sharing the gospel. He don't want you to tell anybody about what Jesus has done in your life. Hey, can you tell someone what Jesus has done in your life? Uh, I will give you an example how I did it this week. I'm just going to tell you, Jesus loves that person, and all it takes is a moment to do it. Guess what? Listen to me. Write this down in big notes right here. Put it in your notes right here. You cannot save anyone. Amen. Jesus does all the saving. He died on that cross, and he saves the sinners just like me. You lead them to Christ. Jesus does the saving. Amen. Not us. Don't put the pressure on yourself. Guess what Jesus said? They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting him. Amen. So if you fail, guess what? Not your fault. Not your fault. You keep telling them about that. Don't put the pressure on you. So I want to share some ways that you can present the gospel to someone. There's several ways to present the gospel. Now, you got to find out what you like to do, uh, and, and you use that way. You, you find something you like that works with you, and you share it. The first way is a traditional way of sharing the gospel with someone. You take God's Word, you sit down with them, say, hey, let me show you what God's Word says. And then you open that up, and you do scriptures. Here's, if you want to write this down, this is how I lead someone to the Lord. John 3, 16, always start off with that one. That's the gospel in one verse right there. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now that, that's everybody, right? Okay. I go from John 3, 16 to Romans 3, 23 to Romans 6, 23, then to Romans 10, 9, and 10. And then it says, if you believe in these things, you shall be saved. Not you might be if you if you continue. You might be if you do things that you, hey, you shall be saved. All right, then I go to Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I come in and sup with him and him, and he with I. Guess what? I always do this. You can find 
I led you to the Lord, you know I did. I get to that in Revelation 3.20. I said, yes, Lord. Jesus is not on your heart's door right now. And do you know, if you look at the, the original, the original uh, picture of Jesus in the garden knocking on the door and they put that verse right there, if you look at the original drawing, the original drawing does not have a door anymore on the outside. The, the actual artist left it off by mistake. But it wasn't a mistake. Because the door can only to your heart be open on the inside. Amen. So you have to open that door up and let Jesus come in. That's a traditional way. Now, other people use the Roman road. Some others just use different verses that mean so much to them. But here's the deal. You leave it to Jesus Christ and tell him, hey, you're a sinner. You've got to admit that right off the bat. A lot of people have a problem with that. Well, I'm a pretty good person. Guess what? Compared to Jesus, you're nothing. Amen. Okay? You're a sinner. Okay? Then you got to believe in Jesus Christ. And you've got to confess him as your Lord and Savior. So you got the ABCs. I can give you all kinds of things. Uh, the faith. Our youth used to do the faith. Uh, we used to do all kinds of different things. We have EE, which is evangelism explosion. There's different ways to lead someone to the Lord. The main thing is get them that Jesus died on the cross for their sins, and he rose. He's not in that grave. You can go to other people who think they're gods, and they're in that grave. My God's alive, and he stepped out on the third day. Amen. That way I can have everlasting life. So that's one way, the traditional way. Then you have the track way. Now, I got one of these right here. This is John 3, 16. Uh, if you go to uh, our, our exit way, we have tables right there. You can grab you a couple of these. You got something you want to tell about Jesus? I'm telling you, it's the gospel in one verse. It's truly the gospel in one verse. And you can open that up, give that to someone. You, you don't even have to read it. Say, hey, would you do something for me? Would you make me a promise? Would you read this track today? And then tomorrow... Call you and just ask you about it. Or you can give it to someone at work. Say, hey, let me share this with you. You just read it on your own time. And then tomorrow I'm going to ask you, did you read it? And then you tell me what you thought of it. If you have any questions, simple as that. Okay? That's a track. They're right there by the door. Grab one, grab a couple, take them with you. When they're gone, we'll buy them more. And then you have the relationship way. Man, did we see the relationship way today? The families. You get connected, you know. Hey, I want to build a relationship with you. Hey, Bruce, me and you, I get to know you. Hey, won't you come to church with me? We're going to do that. And hey, I'm at work, and maybe Bruce doesn't want to go to church. And so Bruce is watching me and the relationship we build. And Bruce says, you know what? There's something different about Tony. I want, what is it, Tony? What is it about you? Hey, Bruce, I'm a Christian, and the Lord loves me. And he's changed me. And even though I'm going through tough times, I still have joy in my life. And that's what I was saying. You say, okay. And so we build that relationship. And that, guess what, though? I'm going to tell you. Relationship takes the longest time. It takes the longest time. Because people sit there and they go, I'm going to watch Bob Betty. There's something about him. I don't know. Is he? No one could ever be that crazy all the time in a good mood. I'm just telling you. There's got to be something. I bet you he's a, a serial killer. <laughs> you ever wonder about that? You know, you find someone that's just sweet all the time. You go, oh, there's something wrong with that. I bet you he's taking it out when he's like, oh, but that's what. Karen, went, well, Karen says, he is. Amen. <laughs> no, he's not. <clears throat> okay, but you build that relationship. That takes a long time. Okay, and get this. You're doing a relationship witnessing. You better be walking the walk and talking the talk, brother. You tell them, hey, there's something different about that. I'm a Christian. And they start judging. You know, they're judging me. And the Bible tells us you can judge a fruit by a tree by its fruit. And then you got no fruit. And you, the only fruit you got is something that's going the wrong direction. Amen. And so they start looking at you and going, well, if that's a Christian, I'm just as good as they are. I, I don't, uh, if that's a Christian, I don't want anything to do with it. You know, those of you who have been in church for a long time, you know you've heard that. If that's a Christian, I don't want anything to do. I'm just as good as they are, probably even better. One thing is, that person is saved by the grace of God. And listen to when it comes to relationship, it comes to relationship witnessing. Most Christians cannot explain grace to the point that people understand that when you mess up as a Christian, you're not going to be perfect. And when you mess up, God's going to forgive you those sins when we confess those sins. If most Christians don't understand that, 
How do you expect someone who's not a Christian to understand grace when you go, well, hey, God, I asked God to forgive me when I lost my temper and when I went off and threw that tool and said those words. I asked God to forgive me and I'm asking you to forgive me. That's grace. They probably not want to understand that. The other way, the other way, uh, is bring them to church. Bring them to church play. Hey, someone even said this this past Wednesday night. I'm not really sure what to say, but I promise you one thing. They bring them to Real Joy Community Fellowship. Guess what? They're going to hear about Jesus Christ and how Amen. he loves him, right? Amen. Hey, they're going to hear that there's only one way to get to heaven. That's through him. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one that means you comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. Okay? So you want to spend eternity in heaven? you got to go through Jesus. Amen. All right? So that's, 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 that's the, we're just using those today. Uh, now, let me say this. The pressure, you know, the pressure about the pastor. I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm scared to death to, to share someone, share the gospel with someone. The pressure I put on myself. Guess what? Listen to me. Rarely, rarely does someone that you know trust Jesus Christ on the first time that you share with him. It does happen. Okay? It, it happens a lot to a lot of people who are, are, are big soul winners, but when you get someone that doesn't know Jesus Christ and they know you in their life and, and, and they sometimes they go, well, I'm just not ready to hear. Or, hey, I, I'll think about it. Let me pray about it. I'll think about it. And not pray about it. Because, hey, first prayer he hears is them trusting Jesus. So, you know, it's what I say. Hey, uh, I, let me just think about it. I'm going to sleep on it tonight. But don't give up. Do not give up. Tell them about Jesus. Over and over again. You know, um, when I was younger, uh, I kind of watched that new, uh, not new, not new anymore. Uh, do you remember the magician's pit and tell? I don't know which one talks and which one doesn't talk when they're doing the magic. I really don't care. But the one that does talk uh, said this. He said, Christians are fake. He said, because the average individual, the average individual who loves life and loved me, if I was on a train track and the train was coming, you'd do whatever it takes get me off that track before that train gets me. Christian, I'm telling you what, if you got a loved one who's lost, do not give up because the train is coming. Amen. You have got to get him off the track and onto Jesus Christ. Okay? Whatever it takes. I don't care. Hey, you know what? I, no one makes me look dumber than myself. I'll just be honest with you. I can do some stupid stuff. I mean... <laughs> Sometimes I go, I have to laugh at myself, Chad. I can't believe. It's like, where did that come from? What was I thinking? At 55, you would think I wouldn't do some of the stupid stuff that I do. <laughs> Man. All right, this Pastor Chris sitting back here. This past Friday, we was at work, and they had something called Unistrap. And I had a cable train running through there, and we was up, it was 125 degrees up in there. Sweat rolling off of me. My, day, my glasses have done slid all the way down to my head and my nose down like this. I'm sweating. And I ducked down and I ran into a piece of Unistrap and it didn't move an inch. I was six foot five. Now I'm like six foot. Because I, I, my neck still kind of, I drove my head into my shoulders. I looked like, boop, you know, I was like, man, goodness gracious. And I got to laughing because I know three other people just heard that. If not, good thing I had a hard hat on. I would have been knocked out. Okay? And so I started, no one could be any dumber than me than me. Okay? Hey, I could make my own self embarrassed. But guess what? I will embarrass myself any day to tell someone about Jesus Christ so they can spend eternity in heaven with me. Amen. Amen. Hey, I don't care how foolish they think I look if they tell them about Jesus. That's what I want. Amen. That's what I need for them to hear. Jesus, not me. Amen. Not me. It's all about you. The thing is, we can have tract. We can have traditional. We can have a relationship. We can have bring them to church, you know. We can have any kind of plan we got, but the thing is you have to have a plan. 
What's your plan? What's your plan to tell someone about Jesus? Think right now, just for a moment, that one lost person. How? What's your plan to tell them about Jesus? You going to share God's word with them? Open up the Bible, walk through it, highlight that thing. I mean, highlight those verses. Have them read it, okay? There might be some words in there you can't pronounce properly. Guess what? I struggle too. But hey, tell them about Jesus. Take that track. Tell them about Jesus. Relationship. Hey, I want to build a relationship with you so that you know how much I care for you because Jesus cares for you. Okay? Hey, bring them to church. You'll get hugged on in here whether you want to or not. <laughs> Someone's going to hug you, I guarantee you. <coughs> Todd hugged me back there, and I was soaking wet, still had that room ball. I was like, all right, brother, come in. Okay? <laughs> so, you were given that great commission. A lot of times we look for that divine intervention. God, I'm asking you to open the door. I won't be looking, but I'll just open the door. I'm going to look. Hey, you know what? As a former youth pastor, I would ask my teenagers, hey, what's your plan in life? What, what, what's God got for you? What, what do you want to be when you grow up? And everybody asked me, I'd say, I want to be a ballerina. <laughs> Twinkle toes. <laughs> I was kind of individual. I went to dances. Don't act like you're more, uh, you know, more of uh, a... Same thing I am. But I go out to them dances. And... <laughs> <laughs> I left you all those there. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but I did it anyway. But here's the thing. <laughs> I would get in the middle of the dance where people couldn't see my feet, man. That was awesome. <laughs> hey. Hey, let me tell you something. God has got a plan for your life. It might not be a ballerina, but God has got a plan for your life. Let me just show you something. Turn, turn over to Romans chapter 15. <laughs> to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by the word of him. In the power of signs and wonders, the power of the Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and round about as far as Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And thus I aspire to preach the gospel, not where Christ was already made, so that I would not build upon another man's foundation, but as it is written, they who had no news of him shall see, and they who have not heard shall understand. Now Paul's right in here, and uh, Paul has come to this point in his life where he says, I will do one thing. I'm going to preach Jesus. I'm going to share the gospel. Wherever I go, whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to preach Jesus. So today you're sitting here and you say, you know what? I don't really know what, what God wants for my life. Let me ask you this. What do you think God's purpose is for your life? Don't answer out, out loud. Just think just for a moment. What do you think God has for your life? I'll, I'll use myself for an example. Uh, here, here I was. At a very, very young age, I, I was uh, five years old. We lived in the greenhouse in South Point, Ohio, okay, and uh, power was out, and a guy come up, Matt, a guy come up and he had his spurs on, and he had his belt on, and he would climb that pole, I said, I went out and sit at the bottom of the pole, hey, buddy, what are you doing? He looked down, trying to fix the power, I'm doing this, and I thought, like, pretty cool, I think I'll be electric. 
Guess what? That's what I aspire to do. And guess what? I today am an electrician. Can't spell it, but I got it. <laughs> Here, here's the deal. True. God had a plan for me. Now I, I aspire to be an electrician. Now I'm, I'm not a lineman, but I have been in the spurs and I climb the poles and stuff like that. I prefer the bucket truck. It's a lot easier to get up and down. Just back up. But here's the thing. Whatever, whatever you're doing in life, listen to me. I don't care if you're not. I don't care if you're an electrician. I don't care if you're a nurse. I don't care if you're a lawn care individual. I don't care if you're uh, an RN. I don't care if you're a pizza delivery person. I don't care what you're doing in life, but God has given you the divine purpose to be the best Christ representative when you're doing your job. Amen. Wherever you're at, the Great Commission, that is your duty and that's your local town. Tell people about Jesus right where you're at. Be the best representative that they've ever seen. If you're waiting on the table, be the best Christian that they've ever seen. If you're a doctor, be the best doctor. Say, I'm not the mighty physician. He is. I'm just working for him. Guess what? If you're a electrician, says, hey, I'll tell you one thing. Jesus got the power. I'm just bringing it on the tables. You know what I'm saying? You can go on and on. You take care of the lawn care. Hey, it's looking like paradise out in your yard. But Jesus got the paradise. Okay? It's coming. This past week, I tell you what, I used the relationship. I work with a guy, and, uh, you know, I don't see you real good. And I get some of the cabins, I get, get my head back far enough, and I said, boy, I tell you what, Scoop, I tell you what, I can't wait for the day that I can see He goes, boy, you mean, we don't have to wear my clothes? I said, no. <laughs> see, the day's coming, but I'm going to get a new life. And I'm going to have new vision. It's perfect. I don't need my couples anymore. He goes, oh, okay, I understand. See what? Be the best Christ example that you can be when you're doing your job. Tell someone about Jesus. Be that. I don't care what you're doing. Hey, God's given you breath to do something. You do it, and you do it to his glory. The Bible says whatever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord. Do your very best. He gives you that great commission, and that is your divine purpose, that you've got to tell someone about Jesus Christ. And look at what Paul did here. He, he could have started out with this. You guys know Paul's story? Paul saw, you know, what happened with Paul. Paul used to persecute Christians, throw them in jail, do whatever. He was there. In fact, he was a young Saul when they laid the coats down at his feet when they stoned Stephen. Okay, you know your Bible, you know that stuff. And so what happens is that... Paul was on the road to Damascus. He had letters and he was going to go put these people in jail. You and I, he was going to put us in jail. And guess what? He had, a, a, ooh, Jesus come to him and put the shingles on his eyes. <clears throat> and he couldn't see, but he heard the voice. And from that point on, he becomes a big soul winner for Christ. You know what I'm saying? On the road to Damascus. Do you hear that? He trusted Jesus Christ. Boy, that's a pretty good story. He could have said, you know what? I was on the road. He talked to someone his boss. Hey, let me tell you about Jesus. I was on the road to Damascus. And then I was like, bam, a bright light come. I couldn't see. I was blind. And then I heard the voice. Why wow, are you persecuting me? And it's like, what? Who is that? Look, well, you know who it is. Okay, I had a bad thing. Okay, so here's the thing. And then, you know, what a great story. That's an awesome story. Hey, I had an encounter with Jesus. He didn't leave off with that, did he? Look at verse 21. What's it say in verse 21? As it is written. The scripture. His word will not return void. Okay. You know what? It's amazing how many times I stand up here and I, you know me, my mind runs a hundred miles an hour, but I can't think of, I can't even think what my name is that time. And then a bunch of scripture will pop into my head that I've applied in my heart. And I said, you know, I remember that verse. I remember that verse. I remember that verse. And Paul started off in verse 21. Look what it says here. But as it is written. Listen to me. We're a church for the unchurched. If you go on to the rest of that verse, 
hey, there's no reason for us to try to steal someone from another church. And I'll tell you what, I, I, to a Christian, a lot of times when I'm sharing some of mine, sharing the gospel with them, I say, I don't, they said, I've already been saved. I said, really? Well, tell me in your experience. I got saved on this day, and, and it uh, was a church, and just the Holy Spirit moved on me, and I had to go get saved. I said, praise God, I'm so Take his church home before too long. 
Okay? I'm just telling you, it's coming. Get ready. If you ain't ready, guess what? You're going to go through the tribulation, and the chances are you might spend eternity in hell. I don't want you there. I want you to come home with me. I want you to go spend eternity with Jesus. I want you to see the nail scarred hands, the pierced side, say, hey, I love you that much. Today, we're going to give him an invitation to the moment. That's why I can come forward and say, hey, I want to trust Jesus. I want to be a believer. I want to be a Christian. I don't care how you say it. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to believe in the one that is perfect. Maybe you're looking for a church home. Man, we'd love to have you be a part of this church. You can step forward and say, hey, I want to be a part of this church. Now, on both those decisions, listen to me. On both those decisions, someone will walk you to another room. Take God's word with you. Show you what's going on. You want to trust Jesus Christ. Let you make the decision. If you're looking for a church home, we'll walk you to another room. Ask you some questions. Fill out some paperwork. We accept you in several ways. One is by a letter from another church that has baptized you and believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Second way, you can come by statement saying, hey, yeah, I, I was saved as a young kid. Got down on the south point. I don't remember where I was at. And I got back. You don't have to be in south point, but to say that way. And I was baptized. I don't even know the address of the church in order to get the letter. Uh, but I'm coming and telling you right now, I was saved and baptized at this time. Praise the Lord. Or you can come by baptism. Just like that. Today we baptized all eight of those individuals into the body of this church. That makes them a local member of this local body. You can come right here and all will accept you that way. Don't try to pull yourself up and make yourself perfect. It comes from the inside. Is there a decision? Maybe you want to come to the altar and pray. I, I have no idea. Pray for that individual. Let me ask you to do your thing. I, <clears throat> I know it's just a little late. I'll tell you this. Pray for the lost. If you've got a friend that's lost, pray for their name daily. If you've got a loved one, lost, pray for them today that you or someone else will have the opportunity to share the gospel. Pray for 